survival games aren't as exciting as they used to be. I mean, you can only change up a simple formula so many times and still keep it interesting. Surviving the wilderness is still surviving the wilderness, no matter how many times you try it. Other than Valheim, the survival game genre has been relatively uninteresting for the last few years. Every new game tries to add something quirky and unique to switch up the formula, but these additions don't really do much, and most of these games are quickly forgotten about. The genre has gotten stale and boring. But what if I told you about another survival game that seems uninteresting and basic on the surface, but that's ultimately one of the best survival games ever made? One that pioneered this entire genre all the way back in 2014, and set the bar for what future games would try to accomplish. I'm talking about The Forest, and let me tell you, this game is awesome. But first, I should probably explain what's going on here. The game starts out with a plane crash on a mysterious island, and your son Timmy is kidnapped by this creepy-ass dude. Your first task is to set up residence and make this island your home, to be able to survive long enough to find and save Timmy. You love this little guy, and you really need to find him to make sure he's alive. It's extremely important. So instead, you spend 426 hours building a floating water base equipped with three gazebos, dozens of birdhouses, multiple churches, and a small army of rafts just because you watched Avatar and you really enjoy the thought of taking everything from the local inhabitants of this island. Speaking of inhabitants, turns out the island is occupied by a group of friendly Florida men who coincidentally enjoy the taste of human flesh. So while you build your base, work on finding your son, and uncover the mysteries of the island, you also completely obliterate the local cannibal population and put their body parts on a flaming stick to assert your dominance. The forest is buggy as hell, infuriatingly slow, and kind of ugly. But it's without a doubt my favorite co-op survival game on the market. And while it looks similar to other survival games, it really is a game unlike no other once you dive into it a bit further. Getting off the crashed plane, you need to explore the island and make yourself at home by constructing a base, gathering materials, chopping trees, and focusing on your food and water supplies. Just like any other survival game, your health and safety are the most important things that you need to worry about, and as you gather more materials, you can craft improved items and weapons to make your journey just a little bit easier. But safety is an illusion, my friend, because as you get comfortable, the local crackheads come after you and will absolutely destroy everything you've worked so hard for. So, to protect yourself, your first priority is to build a base. The forest has some of my favorite survival base building, and you genuinely have the freedom to build whatever you want as long as you have the patience to gather the materials. You have a little survival book that has tons of different recipes for things that you can build. Within the first few days, you'll probably want to keep it simple with stick and leaf shelters, and maybe some tiny wooden huts to keep you warm, but once you find somewhere more permanent to settle, let the big projects unfold. There's prefab cabins, churches, and shelters, but there's also custom tree houses, bridges, tall walls, and all sorts of other freeform buildings that allow you to construct whatever your heart desires. But building these large projects isn't going to be easy, because you have to manually chop down every single tree that you want to use for resources and carry those logs back to your base. You can craft a log cart to make it a little bit easier, but it is a very tedious process. In the end though, it's worth it because it's extremely rewarding once you put in the effort. I just did a playthrough with my friend Austin, and our original plan was to build a simple little walled area next to a pond. We figured that the water would keep the cannibals from crossing into our base, so we built three walls around the other side and built a nice little cabin. It took forever, and we spent a considerable amount of time chopping down trees one by one with the worst axe on the planet and the stamina of a small toddler. It was hard work, but our base finally came together. But turns out that the cannibals thought we were idiots and completely ignored our water wall, which means that we had to think bigger. So we went over to the nearest lake and constructed an entire water base with docks, a large houseboat, and countless other things that made our original base feel like a cardboard box. And this one paid off because, well, the cannibals couldn't get to the middle of it. The game truly gives you the freedom to build whatever you can think of. Just look up some base builds on YouTube and take a look at some of the crazy stuff that people have built. The forest does base building right and makes the entire experience absolutely awesome. You live in one shared ecosystem with the locals, and your base is your small oasis that gives you a break from the chaos of the world. I always love when a game gives you the freedom to make the world your own, which is why I've played so many simulation and management games on this channel. And based on my viewership, I feel like a lot of you guys will like these types of games as well. That's why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Prosperous Universe. Prosperous Universe is a free-to-play space economy simulator which is now available on Steam. It's a game that really gives you the ability to make the universe your own, and you could forge your path by starting your own company, 
whether that's in the field of mining, designing spaceships, or buying and selling resources on the market, which is actually fueled by real supply and demand. Then, you have to transport these goods and trade with other players in a shared universe using a shared economy. It is one big ecosystem, and everything is provided by real players who are also helping to advance the space economy and fuel trade. In short, this game is super unique, and it's something that you'll definitely enjoy if you're into thought-provoking and immersive games. It is a grind-free experience that doesn't limit you based on the time you invest, and there are no pay-to-win shenanigans. The game is based on understanding and utilizing complex systems that are extremely rewarding to learn and master. So if this sounds like something you'd be into, check out Prosperous Universe using the link below. So back on the topic of bases, they're great. A nice base helps you to feel safe and makes the journey a lot easier moving forward. Huh, <laughs> you thought. If anything, your base acts as a beacon in the night that says, hey crazy cannibals, come and ruin my hours of hard work. Because you see, you aren't surviving alone on this island, and the more time you spend on it, the more problems that you're going to have with the locals. The first time that you come across some cannibals while you're out minding your own business, you are going to absolutely sh** yourself. They'll stalk you, make terrifying noises, and watch you from a distance, keeping you on edge the entire time. But eventually, they will attack, and the more of them you kill, the more of them you attract. It gets intense quickly. There have been so many instances where, while out on a run to collect some sticks or maybe chop some trees or something, I've been ambushed by an entire platoon of cannibals who had enough of me murdering their relatives. Even hours into this game, these guys are terrifying, and regardless of how geared you are, you will be on edge the entire time. They'll follow you, watch you from the trees, and make bone-chilling battle cries before they inevitably attack. They'll surround you and attack you, and there's nothing you can do but fight back and try to survive. And when they come at nighttime, that is a whole different story. Have fun running back to your base while being chased in a pitch black forest with the screams of crazed cannibals right behind you. Have fun coming out of a cave and being absolutely surrounded, watching your friend die and then coming in and out of the cave using all the rest of your medicine to fight the rest of them one by one with a garbage weapon and a can of hairspray. I'm telling you, the cannibals are extremely intense and it never stops being that way. You fight these cannibals by crafting weapons with the materials that you find around the world. The crafting in the forest is super unique, and it requires you to manually combine ingredients in the physical form to create different weapons and items. It's actually a really cool crafting mechanic, and it makes the entire experience much more immersive and realistic. Your early game projects will be to construct a spear, a bow, or everyone's favorite, a flaming stick. These weapons will be okay at first, but as the cannibals play a bigger role in your experience, you'll need to step it up with better weapons. And the way you do that is by finding them spread around the island. You see, this island isn't just a forest, there's a lot more to it. The biggest part in your gameplay experience, and by far the most intense and terrifying, is exploring the caves. You'll naturally come across caves while you play, and you'll inevitably explore them to see what's inside. And oh boy, you better be prepared for some crazy stuff. These caves are dark and terrifying, and exploring them using only the light that you can create from your trash gas station lighter makes you even more on edge. As you climb through crevices and rappel down ropes, you will come across more cannibals, but also darker and creepier secrets. And you will be in for a ride. Let me just show you a quick glimpse into what this experience looks like. I'm so scared, I can't see anything. I don't dude. hear anything. I do! This is scary, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Tanner, there's a f***ing, like, tentacle beast. Bro, I don't think it, it sees big? me. No, bro, look. It's got, like, eight legs. You see it? Oh, that's from the picture in the boat. Alright, I'm leaving. I shot it. Oh, it's- Oh, 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 oh. Where's the tentacle guy? Uh, oh, oh! Oh, my torch went out! Burned him. Oh, I hit him. He's just, like, running around. Oh! Bro, I <laughs> killed my feet. Oh! oh, he's dead. Oh! Where did that guy come from? You're on fire. I'm on fire? Yeah. Oh god, I got a Molotov. I hope it doesn't like explode. Oh, it's a spider noise! Oh, oh, I'm out of stamina! I'm out of stamina! <laughs> Go back. Oh, he's on fire. <sighs> Holy Is he dead? Bro, what is this guy doing? Bro, he's like skating. Oh, he's dead. 
Yes, there aren't only cannibals, but there are also disgusting, strong abominations that will destroy you if you aren't paying attention, and they'll create the most intense, terrifying experience that I've ever seen in a survival game. Seriously, the experience of diving into these caves, exploring, and surviving the enemies is one of the best things about this game, and it adds another layer of complexity that helps the forest to shine where so many other survival games become boring. So be prepared and be careful or else you will die and getting your stuff will be a bigger nightmare than the cave itself. It sounds risky to go down in these caves, I know, but it's necessary because this is where you find new items and, most importantly, clues to the location of your sun. Along the way, you can find things like axes, crossbows, flashlights, compasses, rebreathers, climbing axes, and much more. These tools and weapons will allow you to progress further, to hold your own against increasingly crazy enemies, and to let the story unfold and work on finding your son Timmy. And as you begin to discover that there's more to this story than initially meets the eye, you'll be motivated to find out what's going on, because whatever it is, it's crazy. This is where the story comes into play. The Forest has an extremely interesting story that serves as the foundation for everything that you do throughout your playthrough, and it makes the experience much more unique and exciting. So the story starts out with your plane crashing, and a mysterious red man taking Timmy from you at the scene of the wreckage. You awake, hungry, thirsty, and struggling to figure out what happened, and get a feel for where you are. You have complete freedom to do whatever you want, which will usually consist of a few days of gathering materials, building a base, and crafting items to make it to where you can survive. But throughout this experience, you have one pressing task. To find Timmy. As you explore the island and fight off cannibals, you will inevitably find this giant sinkhole, and you'll need to find a way to get to the bottom of it to see what's inside. And to do that, you'll need the improved items that I mentioned earlier, the ones that you find in caves. And these caves are where you find tapes, notes, and lore that help to develop the background of the story and what happened to your son. This next part will have spoilers, so beware and skip to the timestamp on the screen now if you want to avoid them. Now is your last chance. 3, 2, 1. Turns out that the island hides a secret laboratory called Sahara Therapeutics. It was opened by a guy named Dr. Matthew Cross and was aimed at providing therapeutic healing to children with terminal illnesses. Cross purchased the island after a mysterious ancient artifact was found, and he built this laboratory to study the artifact and its ability to cure illnesses and bring people back to life. He did this with the intention of saving his daughter, Megan. In order for this ancient obelisk to heal someone, it needed to sacrifice a living subject. So, Cross began experimenting with the children in his program to test how it functioned. However, these tests didn't go as planned. When a dead subject was resurrected, it developed mutations that nobody could have ever predicted. These subjects turned into those disgusting mutants that were found in the caves. So, the laboratory put them into observation rooms and kept them secure to study what was causing the issue. However, one day, one of these mutants escaped and sent the laboratory into a downward spiral. This escaped mutant killed a bunch of scientists, destroying everything, and worst of all, killing Megan. Everyone but Dr. Cross perished, and the army of mutants escaped out onto the island. The lab was no more. But Dr. Cross, being the sole survivor of the incident, had a plan. You see, there was actually another obelisk that was found and that Sahara was also conducting experiments on. A power obelisk. This one acted as a sort of EMP, and it could be used to bring down planes. So, Cross activated it, causing the plane that you and Timmy were on to crash, and providing him with a live subject that he could use to resurrect his daughter. That subject was Timmy, and the creepy person who took Timmy at the site of the crash was Dr. Cross. So, as you explore the island and come across this secret research facility, you get inside and find that Timmy has been sacrificed, and that Megan has been resurrected at his expense. She's sitting alone in a big chamber, and when you approach her, she mutates and turns into a massive, disgusting, and terrifying creature that you have to fight. This creature, ironically, ended up killing Dr. Cross as soon as Megan was resurrected. So, you fight Megan, try to use her to revive Temmie, and find out that you need a living subject to do so. This desperate need brings you to the site of the Power Obelisk, causing you to bring down a plane just like Cross did to get another victim and to bring Timmy back to life. If you decide to do this, the game jumps one year into the future where you and Timmy are at a talk show, explaining how you survived the island. But here, we learn that Timmy is not okay. Those mutant side effects? He's developed them too, and while on the show, he goes crazy, killing everyone. The game jumps forward again to adult Timmy and shows him on a quest to find a cure. To find the second sight. 
and this is presumably where the second game will pick up. The story, while by no means an Oscar-winning narrative, is extremely interesting and keeps you engaged throughout the entire experience. It makes you stay curious and motivates you to continue on your survival journey to figure out what happened, and it makes the forest even more awesome. The combination of the unique and compelling story, the mysterious and spooky cannibals and mutants, the exploration, the crafting, the base building, and all of these other odds and ends helps to make the forest into a revolutionary and iconic game. While a lot of the systems seem a little outdated in today's survival game landscape, and it's a bit buggy, it's still a really solid game and I definitely recommend playing it because it's kind of considered a classic at this point. The game's been out since 2014 and has evolved into a landmark survival game experience, and has even led to the creation of a sequel that's coming out in February of 2023. I'm extremely excited for Sons of the Forest, and I'm curious to see how it improves this formula to create something even better. But until it comes out, I'm gonna stick with The Forest. What are your thoughts on this game? Have you played it a lot? And are you excited for the sequel? Let me know in the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and stay tuned for a Sons of the Forest review in the near future. I will see you guys next time, and peace.